Before you start your session, you need to take a couple of steps to make sure everything is set up correctly. You need to check that the detector and the lamp you need are both installed. You do this on the iLab calendar. You need to make sure the system is under vacuum by checking the console screen. It should say ready and the pressure, P, should be really low. You need to check the nitrogen cylinder to make sure it's not empty. You need to check that the correct source is installed and on. You can do this by looking at the box underneath the table. You need to check that the correct beam splitter is installed. There are two ways to check which beam splitter is installed. The first is to check the storage boxes to see which one is missing. As you can see in this example, the brown and the silver beam splitters are in the storage boxes, so the red one is installed. The second option is to vent the system and check the beam splitter under the round lid. You vent the system by pushing the down arrow until vent optics is selected and then push enter. Remember, you are never allowed to touch the beam splitter, so make sure you are only looking under the round lid and not touching anything. The last step you need to take is to check that the correct module is installed. It is standard to use the diamond ATR. If you did not vent the system when checking the beam splitter, do so now. After the system is vented, you can carefully lift the silver lid straight up and set it on the table. Be careful not to hit the arm under the lid because the lid is pretty heavy. Now that the lid is off, we can see the diamond ATR. You want to lift the arm to make sure there is no sample. You can do this by loosening the knob closest to you and gently lifting the arm towards you. To make sure the system is clean, you want to wipe it with a chem wipe. At this point, you can put the arm back down. Push the knob closest to you down and tighten it. Make sure that the top is not touching the diamond. Place the lid back on and evacuate the system. You evacuate the system by pushing the up arrow until evacuate optics is selected and then push enter. At this point you are ready to start your session. The little light at the bottom of the machine should be red. It is red because you have not started your session yet and there is no nitrogen flowing through the bench. So start your kiosk session. You should hear a puff from the nitrogen cylinder, and the light should turn green. Now you want to start the software. On the computer, double click on Opus 4.0. The password is Opus in capital letters. O-P-U-S, enter. Then click OK. You want to check that the system is working properly, so click on the test tube icon. This is where you will do everything. The basic tab is where you will load your experiment. So click load and then select your experiment. During training, it will be added to your personal folder. Then click open. Next you want to check the signal, so click check signal. Once you are on the check signal tab, do not touch, click, or press anything until the signal shows up. If you do, the software will likely crash. It may take a little while for the signal to appear, but be patient. Now there is a signal. If you look at the instruction table for the MIR, DLA TGS, and the Diamond ATR, the intensity should be about 2500 or more. For this example, you can see the intensity is about 2600, so there is more than enough and the system is working properly. If the intensity had been about 2300 or less, you would have wanted to contact staff for help. At this point you want to do the background scan, located in the Advanced tab. In the Advanced tab, you can change the folder path for your data, and you can change the scan time and background scan time. Typically the number of background scans is going to be anywhere from 64 to 256, but it could be a lot more. 
the number of sample scans should always be less than or equal to the number of background scans. Now you want to go back to the basic tab. Before you click anything, just as a reminder, the diamond should not have anything on its surface. So now on the basic tab, you want to click background single channel. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the number of scans as they happen. When it finishes, you should see the words no active task on the screen. Now you are ready to load your sample. So first you're going to want to vent the system, and then after the system is vented, carefully lift the lid and place it on the table. You can load your sample without lifting the arm, but it is much easier to lift the arm first. Make sure to hold down the ATR when moving the arm. You need to place a piece of sample over the diamond. Any extra is unnecessary. In order to compress the sample without contaminating anything, you use the little aluminum puck. Just place it on top of the sample. Do not adjust it once it is on the sample. Once the puck is on the sample, bring the arm back down, lock it in place, and then twist the screw until it clicks once. Put the lid back on, and then evacuate the system. You have to wait until the system says ready before proceeding. At this point you are ready to collect your sample. So go to the advanced tab, make sure your file is named, and make sure the number of scans is correct. Now go back to the basic tab and click sample single channel. Now you can see a signal. You can zoom in on it by right clicking, then click zoom, and then click zoom in. You click and make a little box and then click where you want the box to zoom in. If you want to completely zoom out, right click, click scale all spectra, and then click show everything. You can change the color of the pattern by clicking the little box labeled ATR in the top left part of the screen. Now if you want to measure a second sample, Go back to the test tube, and then you want to load your second sample. So to switch your samples, vent the optics, remove the lid, loosen the big knob on the arm, and then the small one, and then lift the arm while holding down the ATR. You can grab the puck and clean off the sample. The sample might stick to the diamond, so you can use chem wipes to clean it carefully. Though most samples won't stick. If the sample won't stick to the chem wipe as you clean it, you can use some alcohol or water to get it to stick. But remember to never push the dust into the instrument. Also remember to clean the back of the puck before placing it on your second sample. Now you are ready for your second sample. Loading the second sample is going to be the same as loading the first. Place a small amount of sample on the diamond. Place the puck over the sample without adjusting it. Lower the arm. Lock in the arm with the small knob. And then turn the big knob so it clicks once. Put the lid back on, and then evacuate optics.
Another way to check that you are at a stable condition after evacuating the bench is to use check signal. Again, after you click the check signal tab, do not click anything while waiting for the signal to appear. When the signal does appear, you can look at the amplitude. If the amplitude is not changing very much and is still in your desired range, then the system is stable. Now you can go back to the advanced tab and change the file name. After you change the file name, go back to the basic tab and click sample single channel. Now you have a second pattern. When you don't have any more samples to run, you have to do two things. First, you have to convert the data into a usable format. To do this, make sure the ATR button of your first sample is selected. This is located in the top left part of the screen, and if it is selected, it will be outlined in red. Once it's selected, click File, and then click Save As. Give the file a name. In this example, the name used was test1.csv. Make sure you're saving it to the correct folder. Then click the Mode tab and make sure Data Point Table is selected. Then in the Data Point Table tab, change the separator from a tab to a comma. This will allow you to open the file as a CSV in Microsoft Excel. And then finally, click Save. You can do the same process when saving your other samples, but you only need to change the name. Your other changes will be remembered. Now the second thing you need to do is put the system back on standby. So close out of the software and end your kiosk session so the system is no longer using gas. The green light should turn red again. Now you need to clean off your sample. So vent the optics. Lift the lid. Lift the arm up. And wipe off your sample with the chem wipes. You can use alcohol to make sure it is nice and clean. After you finish, you can move the arm back down, but make sure it does not touch the diamond. Lock the arm in place, put the lid back on, and then evacuate the system. The system should always be left under vacuum when you are done. Once the system is under vacuum, you are good to go.